In this presentation, we're going to record a transaction related to salaries expense. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. Let's first take a look at our Excel worksheet to see what our objective will be. We're over here in tab five. So within tab five, we're gonna have our salaries transactions. Let's take a look at our little description over here. We're gonna say that the salaries paid were 209,460 and then we had accrued salaries of 16,800. Now note, I'm not gonna go into the whole salaries transaction uh, with it with zero. In other words, we're not gonna run salary within zero. You'll typically have to have an added feature to, and pay for the added feature in order to run it through there. Plus it's gonna be a, a, a lot of information in, in order to run payroll. And we do, uh, if you wanna take a look at payroll, we have some payroll uh, resources for you if you wanna look at some of those other horses. But we wanna just record a, a transaction here. Note that payroll can be run through the, the zero system using an added feature paying more for the zero system or you could basically pay for payroll outside with a third party vendors third party vendors including our companies like an ADP or a paycheck so you can run the payroll through the zero system with an added on added cost to it or you can basically have that third party vendor we're going to basically we're going to be assuming we have a third party vendor and we're going to enter this into our our system with just a journal entry now we're not going to get into a lot of the withholdings either so like i say if we want to get into payroll withholdings and all that kind of stuff we do have a course on uh, payroll and payroll taxes so we're going to say if, if you break out if you take out all that added information in terms of withholding the payment for payroll is straightforward where we, you would just be like pretty much every other expense you're going to credit cash cash is going to go down and then we're going to be debiting the salaries expense so we're going to record that transaction if we put this into our system over here, then uh, we would have an increase or sorry, decrease to cash. And then the expense would be going up down here. So the expense would be going up down here. We're going to do that first transaction. Then we'll talk about the accrual. So let's go back on over and we're going to enter that into our system. This is in essence, simply a money going out transaction. So I'm going to hit the plus button up top. We're going to say that it's a spend money form. So we're going to go into the spend money form going to be coming out of the checking account so we're going to select the checking account and then say next now i'm going to set the employee up just basically as a vendor here since we're not going to be processing the payroll through the system so i'm just going to set the employee up as a vendor and call it employee one so we could uh, we're assuming of course that this is uh, an employee that we're going to be paying that would be the name of the employee and also note that we might have multiple different employees and you have a similar transaction for for the multiple uh, employees. So then we're going to have the date here. Let's make the date the 6th of January. So selecting the drop down, I'm going to bring it on back to January 6th, January 6th. And then I'm going to put it into the, I'm not going to have an item here, description. We could put payroll or something like that or the period, but I won't. <laughs> I'm going to say quantity is going to be one and then we're going to pick up the amount and the amount is going to be the 209,460. I'm looking at this number over here, the 209,460. So let's go to that. So I'm going to say one uh, unit price is sorry, 209,460. And then the account is going to be something like wages. Let's see if they gave us something such as wages or salaries or payroll. Here's payroll taxes. So there's wages and salaries. That's the one we want. And then we have the unrestricted and the restricted. So we're gonna put this, this is gonna be a component of the unrestricted items, but I'm not gonna choose them right now. I'm gonna keep them as unassigned. And then we're gonna go back into all the unassigned items and then assign them. Why would I do it this way? Because we're gonna have to break this out between the 20, 20, 40, 20. And that's gonna be a, you know, a little bit of a tedious task. We're gonna have to do that in and of itself. So what I would recommend doing then is, is keeping the bookkeeping separate from that kind of process. And then if you specialize, you can, you can go a little bit faster. So if you enter in a lot of transactions, then I would say let's not put it into the unrestricted and restricted items. And then we will go back into those items from the reports and do just that, breaking the, break, going back in and breaking these items out to their unrestricted category. So we will see that in a future presentation. Therefore, I'm gonna keep these blank for now. That means the transaction is simply gonna be a decrease to the cash of the 209,460. The other side then go into the expense account 
of the wages and salaries. And then when we run our worksheet report, it's gonna show up as, un, as uh, uncategorized. All right, let's take a look at it. Let's say save, see what happens then. So we will save that. And it's green, that's good. That means I didn't mess up or hopefully not. So then I'm gonna go up top, go to the accounting, and then let's open up the old balance sheet. Let's open up our financial statements. So I'm gonna open up the balance sheet first. We'll change the date up top, changing the date to uh, 2020. So I mean, yeah, 2020, January. <laughs> and then update that report. So there's the balance sheet. And let's, let's open them all and then I'll go back into them. So I'm gonna right click on the balance sheet and then duplicate that report. So I'm on the tab up top, right clicking and duplicating, going back to the tab to the left. Also gonna open up our income statement. So I'm gonna open up our normal income statement. Then I'll open up the income statement worksheet. So I'm gonna open up the normal income statement first. Normal income statement opening at this point. There it is, and now let's go ahead and copy this. So I'm gonna right click on this up top, right click on this tab up top, and uh, duplicate that tab. Wanna open up another report, go back to the tab to the left. We're gonna go to the accounting dropdown. This is gonna be the worksheet report that we have put together. We put this together in a prior presentation. It was a good time, great time. If you missed it, you might wanna go back and check it out because uh, you're missing out if you haven't seen that one. This is gonna be our worksheet report, modified income statement in essence. Okay, so now let's analyze them. Let's go over to the balance sheet again. I'm gonna hold down control and scroll up a little bit so that we're at that 125%. That's where I like to be, the 125. And then if we scroll down, we're gonna say that the checking account should have going down. Let's go into the checking account and see how it went down with regards to our payroll. So here it is, if we scroll down, there it is, decreasing by the 209,460 gonna go back to the balance sheet up top just gonna go back to the balance sheet and then if we go to our income statement the other side is gonna be on the income statement so the standard income statement here if I scroll down just having the one column we have the wages so there's the wages it looks good uh, that looks appropriate and then we're gonna go to the worksheet if I go to the worksheet then now this is gonna be breaking out between unrestricted and restricted. Now you'll note down here that it's not in unrestricted or restricted. We, we, it should be in unrestricted and then further broken out by the restricted categories that we saw, the 20, 20, 20, 40 categories. But it's not over there, it's in unrestricted. So that's what we're gonna do. All the expenses, I'm just gonna say, hey, just put them in there like you normally would. Don't, don't burden yourself with uh, with trying to break it out every time you enter a transaction because if you unless you have a few transactions so you have a lot of transactions it might be faster to just enter the transactions in then we'll go back into the, each of these unrestricted items at the end and and allocate them and we'll do, we'll separate our duties in that way and specialize a bit which should hopefully make things go a bit faster all right, so now let's right click on this tab up top again. I'm gonna right click on this tab and duplicate this tab. So now we got our balance sheet, we got our income statement, we got our worksheet, and then we could do stuff on the tab to the left. And we're gonna do more stuff. The stuff we're gonna do, if we go back on over to the worksheet, is going to be the accrual entry. Now this is an adjusting entry typically at the be at the end of the period. And it would be something like this. You would, you know, an adjusting entry, you'd say, well, payroll, if I pay people every week, and the end of the month, the 31st, and ended on a Thursday, then I, I, uh, I hadn't paid people till Friday, so that means there's gonna, be, there's gonna be four days of work that I haven't yet paid, and we'll have to do an, an accrual entry for it, recording the expense and recording the, the liability for the work that had been done up to that point that we haven't yet paid, because in essence, the payroll is basically on a, on a cash basis, more or less, the, and, and that's gonna be easier logistically but then we're just going to adjust it periodically at the end of the at the end of the period for that adjusting entry. So this is a period end uh, cutoff adjusting entry for let's say the end of January. So I'm going to enter this then, go back on over, and this would typically be done with basically a journal entry. We would typically use a a journal entry to enter something like this. So. Now I'm gonna hold down control and scroll back down just a bit to get back down to our 100%. Then, and you wanna do that when you're entering data, otherwise zero can, might you know, get a little funny, they might do something funny. So when you're on the reports, you can zoom in. When you're not on the reports, you can still zoom in, but it might do something funny, and if it does, then you wanna zoom out because that's probably the problem. So then I'm gonna to go to the accounting and we're gonna go down to the reports, accounting, then the reports. We're looking to enter journal entries. 
This is kind of a funny place that they put the, the journals, but this is where it is. So this is, I feel like it's funny. It's under the accounting, and then we're gonna go to the journal report, to the journal report. And there might be a reason for this. They might be putting the journal entries in here to, to try to remind you to do, you know, use forms before you start just entering journal entries. But in any case, we're gonna hit, we're gonna enter the journal entry. So we're gonna have a, uh, add a new journal. So we're gonna add a new journal and then we have our journal entry that we can enter. So I really like this narration thing that they give up top because that gives you the description that goes on both tabs. So I'm gonna say this is a payroll, well, let's just call it an adjusting entry and I'll say payroll. So then they can separate the adjusting entries from the non-adjusting. Now, if it's an adjusting entry, it would be in there as of the end of the month. So I'm gonna say the end of uh, January. So let's go back to January 31st. It would typically be in there as of the cutoff date. And then if I go down to the description, notice it populates the description for each line item from that narration. So I don't have to like copy and paste the description for each line, which is nice. So I, I appreciate that. And then I'm gonna say the debit is gonna be going to the wages. Let's see if we can just type it in there. Wages and salaries, that's the one. And it's going to be four, or then again, I'm not going to, now note, we still have the, the classification here, and I, I'm not going to record it to them, but just realize that it is here on the journal entry. So when we do go to classify, we can use the journal entry to, to classify this out. Now, we don't have to use, in other words, a form because it has the, the unrestricted and restricted tracking feature because they are in the journal entry here as we see. Okay, so then we're gonna go back on over and say the amount is 16.8. So 16.8, so I'm gonna say 16800. And then the other side, also see that description comes down? That's nice. And then the other side's gonna to go to a payable account, which we most likely don't have. We're gonna call it like payroll payable. So it's gonna be a liability account. Payroll, oh, they have it, payroll wages payable. Yes, indeed, so that's the one we want. That's the one. All right, so what's this gonna do when we record it? It's gonna increase the expenses by that 16.8, and the other side's gonna go to a liability because we owe it as of the end of the year or the end of the month, uh, which is that 16.8 as well. That's gonna increase the liability. And then it's not gonna record it to a category, so it will be uncategorized once again. Let's check it out. We're gonna say post that one. And then hopefully I get a green thing. Green thing, we did it good. And then we're gonna go back to the balance sheet and update that report. Hold down control, scroll up just a bit, bring it on back up to that uh, 125. That's where we like to be at the 125. And then if we scroll down on the balance sheet, there's the payroll wages payable. That's gonna be the 16,800. So that did just what we wanted it to do. And then if we go to the income statement and update this report, so remember to update, you wanna be working with fresh reports, refreshed reports. Then in the salaries and wages, we're gonna have two components in there. One was the uh, one that decreased the cash and the other is our journal entry. Scrolling down, scrolling down, there it is. And you can see here it says manual journal. So it kind of gives you the, the source document, spend money form versus the manual journal. All right, so then we're gonna go back up and go back to our income statement. Now let's go to the income statement worksheet and freshen up that report with an update. So we're working with fresh material, fresh data, fresh numbers, fresh financial statements. So then if we go on down, we're gonna have once again in the wages at the 226, 260, not assigned to unrestricted. This is where it should be unrestricted, but we're not gonna do that because we have to then further assign it out to the 20, 20, 20, 40 categories. And we're gonna do that all at once in a future presentation, which will be great, but that's it for now. Let's get out of here.